Hi everyone, I'm Alicia. I've been sick with a cold for over a week now, and so I thought that I would work on designing some necklaces that I've been wanting to make for a long time. So I've had this design, necklace design, stuck in my head, and it was actually a design that I created several years ago, and I really loved it, and I wanted to recreate it again, but using different kinds, sizes, and shapes of beads, and also some different stringing materials. So for this tutorial, I'm going to show you the four necklaces that I've made, and I'm going to give you some ideas on how you can make necklaces with large beads and also beads with large holes. So I recommend that you go through your bead stash and look for some large beads that you've probably had for a long time and you don't know what to do with because they're so big because they would probably work really great in this necklace and also look for some beads with large holes. Now if you don't have beads like I'm talking about I will tell you where you can get some and I'll also leave some info down there in the description bar on where I got mine. This is the first necklace I made, and I actually made this one to go along with a dress that my mom has. All the colors that are in here are the colors that are in her dress. Now, these are some large beads that I had found at Walmart, and they have very small holes, so I decided that, that I would just use head pins with them. So I made a ring at the top, and I connected a jump ring to it, and I laid it out on my mat and I was designing it and I thought it kind of looked strange with just these five big ones so I went through the mix of beads that I would got this here is a, a bead mix that you can get at Walmart these are acrylic beads and they're actually really nice quality and I like the color mixture because it's kind of colors that I would never put together and I'm always looking for new color combinations so I got this and there's a ton of beads left and I just picked some beads out that matched her dress and I found these ones in it and they're really neat they're really pale yellow and I put them in between the larger ones to kind of balance it out and I really like how it looked now all of the um, acrylic ones that are colored I got from Walmart. Uh, these gold spacer ones here though are actually plastic and they are co coated with a gold metallic mat. Now sometimes when I'm buying metal beads I actually like to buy plastic beads that have a metal finish on it and I'll tell you why because most of the time when I buy metal beads they tarnish on me but I've actually found that plastic beads or acrylic beads with a metal coating lasts longer and look a lot better for many years than the metal ones so these ones here I actually found at a thrift store and I think they were on the top there was a ton of them on the top like 200 and I bought the top just to get the beads the top was really cheap it was less than a dollar so um, this was the first necklace that I'd made in um, I actually have tiger tail underneath here and I crimped the ends and I just put a split ring on the ends and I uh, figured out how much or how long this was and then um, I added chain and also put an extender on it so she can make it any length she wants. So this was the first necklace I made and again I got these pretty acrylic beads from Walmart. Here is the second one I did, and as I was collecting the beads for these, I realized that I should try to use bees, beads for these necklaces that you guys can find easily. And also, I know that a lot of you don't like to shop online, so I actually went to stores that everybody kind of has, which is Walmart and Michael's. And I tried getting beads from those two places because I know that more beaters have those two places available than really any other places to buy beads. So I was trying to stick to those two places to get beads to make these uh, necklaces so you guys could get the same or similar beads. So this necklace here is actually the design that I really love is how this is how this is laid out. This is my design that I actually made several years ago. But the one I made year years ago I did with cord, not the way that I have it this year with chain in the uh, tiger tail, the uh, nylon coated stainless steel wire underneath these beads here. So these beads, the oval ones, this one, this one, this one, this one, this one, this one, and this one, I bought at Michael's. They came on a strand in the bead gallery select. Uh, selection and I think they were on sale like 40% off or something anyways I had 
this big round one and these two round ones already in my stash and when I saw these I knew that this was going to be an awesome necklace so I bought them and I came home and they were the same exact color I was really happy about that now these here the pave acrylic beads have large holes so I wanted to use a cord with them but when I started designing this I realized that I had to use kind of a a rondelle bead because of the color I had to stick with that bead because I had nothing else that really went with it so those had smaller holes so I ended up using super lawn cord to thread these with and down here I tied the knots and I'm going to show you how to make this and um up here I decided on using 60 seed beads in between the rondelles uh, so I could space this better because if I just used the rondelles and then I had these between the rondelles, it would be too tight and compact together and it wouldn't hang right. So I put six OC beads in between the rondelles and it looks pretty good. Now this chain here is a Rolo cable chain. I actually found this at Walmart. This is my favorite chain to use. I'm always looking for it. And I never really f seem to find it at Michael's, but Walmart actually has it right now in three, no, four different colors. They have the silver, antique, uh, brass, antique copper, and they also have a black. And I got the silver, the copper, and the brass. I didn't get the black one, but I, I, I should have got it because it probably would have looked really awesome uh, with these beads. So anyways, this is the second necklace I made. These oval beads I got from Michaels. These ones here I already had. And I actually got them from another necklace. And I used some rondelles with it. And it is very sparkly. I wish you could see it on because it's really pretty and I love this design because there's a lot of movement to it and because these beads are so sparkly it really plays with the light so, so this is a really fun design and I'm happy to share it with you guys okay so this is the second necklace I made and now I'm going to show you the third one this is the third one I made and this one is actually the closest to my original design because of how I did the cord here so, I did this part here, these dangles, with the super long cord, and I tied knots at the bottom, and I melted them because the super long cord is actually a nylon, so it melts well, so the knot doesn't come unraveled. And I did leather cord up here, and I have a knot on each side. These red beads are actually made of bone, and I got them from a thrift store on a really awesome belt. It was really old belts but it was falling apart so uh, I bought it and I took it apart and uh, it's been really awesome because I can use the beads in it. There's a lot of beads in it for several projects. So these are bone and they're dyed red. I don't know what kind of bone they are. Um, these beads here, these green ones, are ceramic. These are from Michaels. And these pave beads, these sparkly pave beads, are from also from Michaels. They're resin. And then I did here at the top, I'll zoom in. See at the top here how I have these 6OC beads? I put those there because when I was doing this, it looked strange with my red beads touching the red up there. And plus, uh, it just wasn't sitting right. So I put the 6OC beads on the top. And then I strung on the rest of the beads and it looked much better. So I used bronze 6OC beads on the top. And I also put bronze 60 C beads down here at the bottom because the holes in these ceramic beads are so large that my knot would slip through the bead and then all my beads would come off. So these 60 C beads are actually serving as a stopper bead. Now for the cord, what I did with cord, because my camera moved up there, I finished the cord off with wire wrapped. Uh, finding here that I made and I put some antique copper chain that I got from Walmart on the end and the chain also comes with matching clasp I think it comes with two and I put that on the other side so this is adjustable but this is my main design idea I love how this looks because the large beads they have like two millimeter holes these bone ones and it slides perfectly over this large cord so this is my main design idea. And again, this is the third necklace I made. 
this necklace is the fourth and final one that I made and when I was designing this one I wanted it to be extremely girly I wanted to have pink purple blue and also I threw in some white pearls here now the white pearls these blue beads here and these greenish blue uh, pearls here are from Walmart and another one of the acrylic bead um, mixes and I really love that one that's probably my favorite beads out of all the beads at Walmart that one package I could just use those because the mixture in them is so awesome I love all the different shapes and the sizes and the colors and um, some of them have large holes some of them have small holes so there's so many different things you can make with that I really love it um, the purple beads and the pink ones here are actually old world Moroccan beads and I bought them online and I'll leave a link for them down there in the description bar in case you want to check them out but I really love these because they're such a neat decorative pattern on them they're so pretty now instead of just leaving a knot at the end of these here like I did with the other ones I decided to use the cord some more in my designs so um, I took and I put some 60C beads in the cord I tied a knot at the end and I sealed it with clear nail polish. You can also use a glue, but I like to use clear nail polish because it's something that everybody has. And if you use the clear nail polish to seal the cord, and by the way, I had to seal the cord because it's cotton cord and you can't melt cotton cord. It just burns and burns and burns and burns like paper. So you have to seal it with something and I really like to use clear nail polish. Um, but if you do end up doing the cotton cord like I did and you're going to use a clear nail polish, make sure that it's a newer nail polish. Don't use an old clear because if it's gooey, it's it's not going to work right. It's not going to absorb into the cotton cord like um, a very thin, runny clear nail polish would. So I recommend to use a newer one, a newer bottle. So anyways... The cotton cord that I had used on this is a pink cotton cord that I also got from Walmart. And I think it's a one millimeter size or smaller. It didn't say what size it was in the package. But um, I really love that color. It is so pretty. Um, I'm not sure about the chain in this necklace. Out of all the ones that I did, uh, this here I'm not extremely happy with. It's okay. But I felt like there could have been something better, but I just didn't have it. Um, underneath these beads, these beads here have very large holes. I have a 2 millimeter leather cord, and it's like a turquoise blue color. And I only had like a 10 inch scrap piece, so I didn't have enough to do a necklace. So I just did that under here, and I made my wire wrapped ends here with a loop. And I used that scrap piece up that way. And then I just decided to put this chain on it from Walmart because I really didn't know what else I could do with this. I wanted it to be a cord and I felt like it should have knotting in the cord like I did here with maybe the sea beads in it. That probably would have looked nice, but I don't have enough to do it. But um, anyways, sometimes you just have to do with what you got. So that's what I did for the rest of this is I did the chain. So um... I think that's it. Like I said, I got all of these pearls, the blue beads from Walmart in the acrylic bead mix section. The cord I got from Walmart. The chain I got from Walmart. Uh, these 6OC beads I bought online. These I bought online. And I'll leave all this information down there in the description bar. So now I'm going to show you how to make your own. I'm going to show you how to make a necklace that's more similar to this one here that has the cord on it. Um, because I have large enough, or beads with large enough holes that I'm going to be placing in this section, I'm able to use the cord. Now, if you're using beads that don't have large holes right here in this area, you can do the tiger tail like I did with the other ones and how I did the chain around it and stuff. So, those necklaces I showed you are just some different options and things that you could do. Now, when you go to select your beads to go right here, you do kind of want them to be round beads, and you want an 8 millimeter, a 9 millimeter, or a 10 millimeter in this part here. You don't want to go small there. Okay, so you want to stay with that size. And what I like to do is I like to have, for the dangles, I like to have smaller beads at the top, and I like to have them get bigger as I go down to the bottom here. Okay? So the necklace I'm making in this video 
In my mind, I wanted to make a necklace that looked like it was from another country. I live in America, and I wanted it to look like it's from Africa or uh, somewhere just amazing. So I wanted it to look like I went traveling to somewhere awesome in another part of the world, and I came home with this really uh, neat-looking necklace. So Moroccan is kind of what I'm going for. So I went online and I searched Moroccan jewelry and I saw all these amazing necklaces and they're using so many different colors in these necklace, necklaces and they're just so gorgeous and a lot of them are using like gold, silver, but not a bright silver, it's a dull silver metal color and also like a brass color so I'm kind of going with the brass gold as my metals here and I wanted to use a bunch of colors so I have these old world Moroccan beads and these and these I bought from the same place and I'll, I'll leave the info down there for you in the description bar again they're called old world Moroccan beads um, the beads that I'm doing on the top are uh, well, in this part right here I'm actually using 35O seed beads. These are Czech seed beads. These are gigantic. They have huge holes, like two, maybe even three millimeter holes. They are massive. I love these. I got them from Shipwreck Beads. They are so beautiful. So those will be on my top. And I have some here, antique brass. Uh, metal beads that I got from Michaels. These bells here I think are from Rings and Things, but my aunt had sent them to me. But a lot of the Moroccan jewelry has bells and neat little trinkets in it, so I'm going to be, I think I might use those. I'm not totally sure, but I think I might want to use them. Um, now, these beads have really large holes, and the biggest beads are going to be at the bottom of my dangles. So I have to have a stopper bead. So I'm going to be using these seed beads here as my stopper beads. And these are uh, 2-0 check seed beads. They say they're e-beads, e but really they're just giant seed beads. Um, these here are ceramic beads. They have large holes. I'm only using four of those because I'm kind of using them, them in the center of my necklace. And because I'm doing cord, I will be making the wire ends like this here on the end of my cord. And I'm going to show you how to do that. It's actually easier than you think. And I'm going to be using this brass wire. Um, I'm using a super long cord. I think this is number 18. I will be using some Rolo uh, cable chain. I have tweezers. This is great for knotting. I really need these to get me through the knotting. I have cutters here to cut my cord and my wire. I have round nose pliers and chain nose pliers. And also I have a piece of leather here. And I think this is a two millimeter uh, piece of leather. Okay and these here will be sliding onto that. So this is the stuff that I'm using to make this necklace. A very helpful tip that I wanted to share with you guys is when you go to design your necklace, you're going to take your larger beads, and by the way, I have seven dangles in all of my necklace. I like that number uh, seven with this design. It looks really nice. Um, when you go to get your beads, you're gonna lay them out like this, of course, on your mat. And of course you're going to do the bigger beads first, then the next size, and so on. Now, it's kind of hard to tell what your necklace is going to be like this, because your holes aren't going to be showing when you put it on. So what I did is I just took some junky wire, and I cut seven pieces of wire, and I bent them straight, and I put a loop here at the end so my beads didn't fall off and I'm just using these to help me design my necklace because it's much easier to see what my necklace is going to look like finished and I won't have as many problems uh, doing it this way than if I did it just laying it down because it might not look right but once I go to string it and I lay it out like this so I just take one of these wires and I put on my stopper bead because these have large holes I have to use a stopper bead and then my beads as I want them to look. Okay, so this is going to be the end of my necklace. Now I'm going to take another one, pick up a stopper bead, these two here. Now this dangle has to be a little bit longer than this one because this one here is going to be the longest. Okay, so they're short in the sides 
and they get longer as they go down to the center. Okay, so there's my next dangle. Okay, now when you lay these side by side, you can see that this one here is slightly longer than that one, and that's what you want. You want it to be short on the sides. You want it to gradually go down and get bigger. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and string these, and when I'll get done, I'll show you my pattern, and then I'll start showing you how to do the cord and how to attach it to the leather cord and stuff like that. So go ahead and lay out your design, and when you're happy with it, then I'll show you how to string it. After I put all of my beads onto the wires and I got the design that I'm happy with, I then took my cord and I put eight beads onto the cord and I laid it on top of this. So now I have an idea of what my finished necklace would look like. And I also put the little bells down here on the ends. And so far, I'm pretty happy with this. I think it looks great, and it is my American version of an old world Moroccan necklace. So now I'm going to show you how to do the super long cord right here on our dangles. So remember, the main reason why I put the beads on the wire was to get an idea of what the finished necklace would look like. I'm not actually going to leave them on the wire. I'm going to use this super long cord to put them on. So I'm just going to put that over there to the side, out of the way. And I think I'm going to start with the end. So I'm just going to take the beads off of this, just like that. And I'm going to pick up the end of my dangle. I always start at the end and I go up towards the top. So I got my stopper bead, my big one there, my next biggest, and then the top bead. Okay, so just like that. Now I want to have my bell at the bottom, but what I have to do is I have to wrap this cord around this cord here, and then go back through these, and then I can put my bell down here. Okay, so I have eight beads here, and I have seven dangles. I'm going to have one dangle between each bead. So I'm just going to slide these down, and I'm going to take my cord, and I'm going to go underneath of this cord wrap it around, make a loop, and then I'm just going to pass it back down through these. Okay, go through my last bead here. Now I need to figure how long I need to make this. I need this to be a little bit longer. I don't like to waste a lot of cord, and really you don't need that much. Okay, so probably have about an inch and a half here of cord. Now, you could, there is a little trick to test to see how much you need, and that is just to pretend you're going to tie the knot, but you don't actually tie it. So I make the thread tight like this, okay? I pull these beads up to this cord, and then I make a loop like this, and I, I pretend that I'm tying a knot, okay? Now, obviously, that's enough cord there to tie a knot. So I'm just going to take my trimmers, which are buried under all my other tools, and trim this cord. Okay. Now I have to put my bell on. I'm going to have it down here at the bottom. So I'm going to slide my bell on one of these cords. Okay. And now I have to make a knot. And I need my tweezers to do this because I want my knot to be close to the end here of my stopper bead, but I don't need it to be too tight because then it won't want to move right on this. It'll be too stiff. I need it to be kind of loose. So I'm going to zoom in just a little bit. Okay. So you can see what it looks like. I'm going to take these cords. I'm going to make a loop just like this. And then I'm going to pass these cords. Actually, I could just probably do it with my fingers. Pass these cords through this loop, both cords, just like that. Okay, and now I have this little knot here forming. And I need to bring this knot down, so I'm going to use my tweezers to do that and bring this knot down, okay? Just like that. If I need it to be looser, I could go up here and I could pull this a little bit, give a little tug, and see that? Now it's nice and loose. Okay, so that's just about how I want it. 
Okay, so I'll leave it like that. And I could tighten this knot tighter and make sure it's tighter. But because this is the nylon cord, I'm going to melt it with a lighter. And it'll melt the fibers and it'll seal it like it's gluing it and it won't come unraveled. But now you get a picture of how to do that. So this was pretty darn simple. And now I'm just going to repeat the same thing I did here with all my other ones. And when I get all my other ones done, I'll come back to you. Now, don't trim these cords off because you want to trim them off almost a quarter of an inch extra. And then melt that down into your knot okay so just leave this on and keep going adding the rest of your dangles and when you're done I'll show you what to do next okay so just keep going uh, making more dangles okay so I kept going and I made all seven dangles and now what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually make my knot a little bigger because I realize it is kind of small and then I'm going to melt my cords. I'm going to show you how to do that. Oh, and I took my bead mat away because I don't want to melt any holes in my bead mat. And one time I got clear nail polish on my bead mat and it destroyed it. So uh, make sure you do this on a, a surface that you're not worried about. Okay, so as you can see, my knot is pretty small. And it is pretty tight right now. I did go back through and I made sure they were tight. But I'm just going to make my knot bigger. Just by doing a, a square knot or a surgeon's knot. Just like this. Okay, so over and under, over and under again, pull that down, okay, and I think that's good enough. Yeah, I'll melt this. I get my chain of pliers and I'll pull it tighter. Okay, so I'm just going to trim my cords off, not all the way to the knot. I want about that much, and I didn't realize I was zoomed in that far. Okay, I'll zoom out. Now I'm going to melt these cords down. Oh, and another thing I realized, make sure that you don't tie your knot at the bottom of a plastic bead. And you have to melt these cords, because then your bead's going to melt. So I have this brass bell, and I have that glass bead there, so I should be fine, because my flame's not going to go back that far. But, um, if you're doing a cord where you can do clear nail polish, then, then you can have a plastic bead at the bottom. Okay? So I'm just going to melt these down. And I try to keep it in the blue flame. Okay. Right there. And sometimes I like to uh, put it against the lighter and smash it down. And what that does, it just makes a bigger ball at the end. Now it is kind of flat right there because I did that. So I'm just going to go back and smooth it out. Make it round. Okay, and you can't touch it. It's sometimes it's it, if it if you have the flame on there for a long time it'll be real hot, but for just a little bit it's not bad. Okay. Okay, that's a perfect knot right there. Okay, so I'll just do it one more time. And get another one. Again, I'm gonna tie a square knot. Make my knot just a little bit bigger. I'll go to this one, the cords are longer. My nails are long, so it makes it hard to do this. Okay, so pull that down. Do one more knot. Pull that down. And again, trim the cords. Okay, and I'm going to burn this. Careful you don't burn yourself. This is like working with paracord. If you've ever worked with paracord, you have to burn the ends of the paracord because it's like made with the same material. Okay. Alright. I think I'll make this a more rounder shape because it's kind of a strange shape. Okay. Got this little funny looking piece over here. I'll go fix that. 
turn this bell around. Okay, so that looks good. So now this knot is just going to sit inside of my bell. It's not going to be an issue. Right, so that's pretty easy to do. Just keep going, doing that, and getting rid of your tails, making your knots a little bit bigger, and melting your uh, little stubby tail down into your knot. And once I do that, I'll be back and I'll show you what to do next. So keep going, getting rid of your tails. I finished melting my knots and I got all my threads gone and now I have to center this in the center of my cord so I could tie a knot, knot on each side. So to easily center it, what I do is I slide uh, three dangles up and beads on each side and I put my ends together and I just bring my longest dangle down and I, I find the center, okay? And then I slide these down. Okay, that's how I find the center. Okay, now I can pick this up and everything falls into place. So that's what it should look like. Now I have to tie a knot on each side. It's pretty simple. I just make a loop and I pass my cord through it. Okay, just like that. And now I'm going to tie a knot on this side, and I don't want this to be extremely tight. I do want this to be a little loose, because I, I need the movement. So I'm going to make a loop, and pass through it. Bring this knot down. Okay, it looks good. Okay, I'm very happy with that. Now I'm going to show you how to finish the ends of our cords. So I just filmed how to do the end of the cord, and then I realized that the camera wasn't recording. So I'm going to show how to do it again. But this time it's going to be recorded. Okay, so what you're going to need is 20 gauge wire, and you're going to need to cut a 4 inch piece. And what I'm going to do is take my round nose pliers and I'm going to make a loop. Okay. And I like to have a little piece of wire that's sticking out the side that is about a quarter of an inch long. Okay. And what you need to do is make sure that your piece looks just like mine. And if you want, you could have a smaller ring. It's up to you, a smaller eye is what I mean. Okay. That's how big I want mine to be. Now what I like to do is actually bend this wire over this wire just a tad because I find it easier uh, for me to work with. So I'm just going to take this long wire and I'm going to bend it over that one just like this. Okay. Now I'm going to take my cord and I'm going to lay it in here. So see how it lays in there nicely? And you want this cord to overlap this eye, just like that. And what you're going to do is you're going to hold that cord down and the eye between your chain nose pliers. And you're going to make one wrap around. Okay? Just one wrap. Now, some people will continue wrapping all the way down here. And then they'll take and they'll squish this with their pliers to crimp it, but it kind of looks messy and I want it to look more professional and I don't want to really bend this up a lot. So I found that it's best to tighten it as you go instead of squish it at the very end. So I just made one loop there and what I'm going to do is squish this loop down and make it tighter, okay? Take your time doing this. There's no rush because we want this to look nice. Sometimes I realize if when I'm going really fast, I'll have a messy result. Okay? So basically, you just want to tighten that up. Okay? Now I'm going to hold the loop again, and I'm going to make another wrap 
around this and I'm going to stop you can see my new wrap and I'm going to squish this wrap too and tighten it up okay now if you have any spaces all you have to do is just squeeze the wire together like that with your chain nose pliers okay so I'm just going to tighten this up be squeezing it and then I'm going to make another loop or another wrap I mean okay and go all the way around and then I'm going to tighten it up again by squeezing it now I'm going to hold it again and I'm going to make another loop or another wrap I keep using the wrong word okay now I just want to double check and make sure that all my wraps are staying tightly together and it looks good and I'll go back and tighten it up and I'll continue oops slipped I'll continue wrapping it is kinda hard to hold this here in the pliers because of that leather piece right there is making it slip so if you want right now at this point just take your pliers and push that leather piece out and you can bend this loop down some and just get in there with your cutters and trim that leather away be careful that you don't trim any of the wire okay and I'm just gonna bend that back and continue wrapping now it's gonna be easier to hold on to okay make some wraps and tighten it up and just continue and I just go past this little piece of wire so it's not seen now some people do like to make this wire longer and then they trim it at the end but then the, this wire is exposed you could see it and it can be sharp so I, I try to make it like I said earlier about a quarter of an inch long and then I can hide it when I do my wraps okay so continue wrapping this okay it looks good I'm right here at the end and when you get to the end you can trim it but what I like to do is just go back grab the very end and bend it you know into a curve and then I can carefully bend it onto my leather and just wrap it around see if I didn't do that little bend though it'd probably be sticking up and be sharp but it's not and like I said if you have any gaps you could fix the gaps by going like this and gently squeezing okay and I'm just going to squeeze the end here and I'm done there you go and if you want you can uh, mess around with your loop and try to get it straighter like that okay and now all I have to do is put my clasp on and an extension chain if you want an extension chain so it's pretty easy to do it just takes a little time and patience this is it I hope that my necklace designs were inspiring to you and gave you ideas on some other ways to use large beads and beads with large holes and just opened your mind to more possibilities so please like this video leave me a comment subscribe if you want to see more of my videos and like me on Facebook and don't forget to share pictures of the jewelry you've made from my videos on my Facebook page and follow me on Pinterest thanks for watching